One of the most common questions I'm asked when testing an electric vehicle is, how much does it cost to replace the battery? Now, firstly, you might think, why would you need to replace the battery? Most new electric vehicles come with a separate battery warranty, usually about eight years or 160,000 kilometers, which is probably more than the lifetime of the vehicle for a, a new owner. But there are a couple of reasons or main reasons why you might need to replace one in the future. The first is battery degradation. This is basically the battery starting to not really deteriorate, but not be able to use its complete capacity. So you've probably experienced this in a mobile phone or even a laptop. They only last maybe two years for a phone or five years for a laptop. And it's basically each battery has a set number of cycles it can go through before it starts to degrade. A cycle is charging it all the way up and then depleting it all the way down again. So each time you do that, you're slowly uh, degrading the battery. Now, electric vehicles are a bit different. The battery technology is better than a mobile phone, for example. It has cooling, which a mobile phone doesn't usually have. A laptop might have cooling, a little fan or something like that. It also has a system where it slows down the battery charge rate towards the end of its, its uh it's charging, so the last 80% will slow right down, there won't be so much power going into it, and the last 5% slows right down. That's to maintain maximum uh, battery longevity for the life of the vehicle. The other main reason you might have to change the battery or replace the battery is if you damage it. Now there's been a few reports from overseas, I remember one particular report where a Hyundai Kona electric owner had damaged the underside of the vehicle and it just damaged the battery pack, just and he was put up with a, a huge bill to replace the entire battery. That's because most battery systems in electric vehicles are a single unit. So it's made up of a number of cells. So think of a cell as like a AA battery, all bunched together and all linked up and all packaged in one big block, usually you know, with glue or something like that or resin where it's all just contained in one big block. Now there are some vehicles, including some that I didn't know about, that that's not the case. They're actually segmented batteries. You'll, we'll get to that in a minute. But basically, if you damage that, uh, you, you usually have to replace the whole thing, and that's why it can cost a lot of money. The reason it's potentially easy to damage an electric vehicle battery is because most electric vehicles, or all that I can think of, the batteries are located under the cabin. So that's under the floor where the seats are, and it's pretty much the lowest point of the vehicle. It is protected by a pretty thick steel plate, but it is nonetheless at the bottom of the vehicle. So if you run over something, a uh, speed bump or accidentally go off road or something like that and it gets damaged, you know, you could be up for a big bill to replace the whole battery. Now obviously petrol and diesel vehicles can be very expensive to repair if the engine blows or something like that. Um, or even if you have, if you do run over something and it gets damaged, it damages the sump, which in, which in turn damages the, the crankshaft or something like that, that can cost a lot. But in my experience as a former mechanic, a new engine would cost maybe $10,000 or $20,000, depending on the vehicle, sometimes a lot more for high-end premium vehicles or a Ferrari or something like that, that's gonna cost a lot. So there is that, it's not just electric vehicles. But the potential issue here is, there's not a very good system out there at the moment to do a health check on a battery. Now on a MacBook or even on mobile phones, I think you can check the state of the battery in terms of the percentage it's being used. I think my poor old MacBook is down to like 50% or something like that. So each time I charge it, I'm only charging 50%. And then I find that when I get down to about 30%, if I start doing something pretty serious on the computer, it just shuts down, it's, the battery's gone. For this video, I've done some investigating to find some prices for you. Uh, I've dug up seven different used vehicles. The reason I chose used is because EVs are becoming more popular including in Australia. There are more and more models coming out, so the, the sales kind of are a bit biased because you know EV sales are going up, yeah, but there are more models available of EVs. So of course the sales, the figures are gonna go up. But soon, you know, if you're on the used car market, ch chances are you're gonna be shopping for a, an EV because they're gonna be a high, there's gonna be a higher concentration of EVs around. So yeah, I've handpicked uh, seven different models, uh, not, particularly for any reason. Uh, some of them are popular, some high-end, some cheaper models. But basically, I have to find the vehicle identification number, the VIN number, in order to tell the, the parts uh, centers what, uh, what model I have, and then they can give me a price. So I had to find some used models available online uh, that had the VIN number showing. 
and then I sort of just told a bit of a, a lie to the uh, the parts or the service center saying that I'm interested in buying a, this vehicle, this used vehicle, and I just want to know, you know, what I'm in for if I do have to replace the battery. Most of them were pretty good about that. They kind of said, you know, why are you replacing the battery? Uh, it should be under warranty, which is true. Um, but I just I just wanted to know anyway, and they, they seemed pretty cool about it. Now I'm going to order this in terms of value for money. Uh, although I don't think that's quite the correct term. I'm going through and measuring a or calculating the percentage of the battery cost, a replacement battery, against its price when new, the vehicle's price when new, and then spitting out a percentage. And we're going to start with the lowest percentage. Now this might surprise you, but it kind of makes sense. I found a 2021 Porsche Taycan 4S, the sedan. So this features a 79.2 kilowatt hour battery. And when it was new, it cost, or the retail price was $189,800 when it was new. That's excluding on-road costs. So I rang the Porsche Center. Uh, they were asking a few questions and why do, you want, why do I want a new battery? I just said, you know, I'm after this, I'm thinking about buying a second-hand one, how much does it cost? He told me $68,000 exactly. So that works out to be 35.8% of that original new car price, which kind of makes sense. You know, high-end model, if you're buying a premium German car, the engine or a petrol or diesel engine probably is about 30% or maybe 20% of the total cost of the vehicle. So that kind of makes sense, I guess. Um, although it's rare that you'd have to replace the whole engine, whereas this, in this case, you're replacing the whole battery. You can't divide it up or not that this, not what this center, service center said anyway. If we're really gonna compare petrol and diesel to electric vehicles though, you kind of need to line it up against the petrol tank because the battery doesn't actually supply, it doesn't actually propel the vehicle, the motor does, so the electric motor. But I didn't ask the prices on those. I don't think that would cost as much because electric motors have been around now for pretty much 100 years. There isn't much to them. There's not many, many moving parts, um, although it could be another cost, but I don't think they get damaged as easily. Uh, and they're certainly not the part that you know, catches on fire in case of a, of a serious accident or something like that. Anyway, moving on to the next one, a 2022 BMW iX3. Now this is a mid-size SUV, it comes with an 80 kilowatt hour battery and its price when new was $114,900. This actually is a, contains a battery that's split up into four modules and they can be separated because he told me a story of a, um, a customer who had to replace module one and two and they were interlinked. Um, or the damage was interlinked. So they had to replace those two modules. It didn't give me a price on the individual modules, but the total price of the four modules was $58,529. Now up against that price when new, that's 50.9% of the value of the car, which is starting to get, you know, pretty serious. You, you think, you know, how can the battery alone be 50% of the total cost of the vehicle? Anyway, Moving on to the next one, a 2022 Polestar 2 long range dual motor uh, with a 78 kilowatt hour battery. Its price when new was $69,900. Now I had a bit of trouble getting through to the service departments with Polestar. Um, in fact, I, had, I rang them yesterday and they sent me on this wild goose chase to the parts center and it didn't go through. So anyway, I rang them again today, finally went through to a guy who was, uh, willing to help me, but he was very curious as to why I needed a new battery. Um, anyway, he basically said that they work on an exchange program. Now, I'm not sure if the others do as well. This is just what the Polestar uh, representative, or not representative, but the service center guy said that they do an exchange system where you give them your broken or damaged battery um, and they supply you with a new one. $45,000 for the new model, for the new battery or a, they offer a refurbished one for $12,000, both of them exchange. Now, I think that's a pretty good system to, to exchange it because that means there is some level of kind of recycling going on. But yeah, $45,000 against that $69,000 price tag means it's 64.3% of the value of the car, which is starting to get, yep, very, very serious. It makes you wonder, you know, how can it be that much uh, value of the car, you know? The next one, a 2023 Kia EV6, now, I think this was the air model that I found, the VIN number that I found, it was for an air model because it had the small wheels, the aero style wheels, but it didn't specifically say air. 77.4 uh, kilowatt hour battery, 
The price when new was $72,590 Australian. When I rang the service department, these guys were very interested in, in what I was, why I wanted to know this, and they were interested themselves, I think, because I could hear them in the background all sort of, you know, um, speaking and, and bickering and things. Um, but basically, they, they were telling me that the car should have a seven-year warranty, so it should be fine. Um, but yeah, if I wanted to replace the battery, she actually laughed when she told me, but $54,633.45, which works out to be 75.2% of that original new car price. Now, that, that's extreme. So if you were to damage that uh, in a car accident, for example, the insurance company is going to write that off. So that's a $75,000 or $72,590 bill for, the, for a new, new vehicle. Um, so I'm guessing that's what it would be insured for. They're going to pay that straight out because why would they pay $54,000 to replace the battery? And it's probably going to have some other damage as well. We'll get to the insurance later, actually, because this is it's bringing up a bit, bit of an interesting point about uh, our potential insurance premiums in the future. Next up, a 2023 MG ZS EV long range uh, that has a 72.6 kilowatt hour battery. Now, MG was very uh, difficult to get hold of a service department that wanted to tell me the price. They just said, no, we don't need to change the battery. Why do you need to change the battery? And just kept going on about it. I said, well, I'm just asking because I'm thinking about buying one. I want to know, you know, it's a couple of years old. Do I need to change the battery? How much am I up for? Anyway, he basically hung up on me at the end of it. Uh, so I rang a different one. And then, yeah, he, this guy was a bit, bit better to talk with. But he didn't give me a, a set price because he said he wasn't in front of his computer, but he said he remembered the last one that he changed and it was about $40,000. Or he specifically said, you won't get much change from $40,000. Um, and then the price when new is $46,990. I think that's drive away. But anyway, that's 85% of the value of the vehicle. Now this made me wonder, MGZS petrol uh, sorry, if this is forty thousand dollars for the uh, for the battery alone, an MG ZS petrol thirty five thousand for a sort of upper spec model equivalent to this EV, which they do come pretty well equipped. You know, it, it just makes you think. Well, shouldn't the petrol model be about fifteen thousand dollars or something, or twenty thousand dollars, considering the petrol engine is going to be a lot cheaper than this forty thousand dollar battery pack? Anyway, it's very interesting. If you want interesting, though, check out this last one here. 2024 Hyundai Kona Electric, long range. So th this was a new vehicle, the VIN number that I got, only had 10 kilometers on it or something. They, uh, they were very interested to know why I wanted a new battery as well, but they said that you can't actually order it in. But I told her the story, you know, I'm thinking about buying. So she was interested as well, um, but she yeah, said that it's covered by warranty. But if for some reason that it gets damaged or something and you had to buy a new one, the retail price that had written on her computer was $85,000 Australian. So the price when new of this, or well, it isn't still new, is $58,000. How can it be $85,000 just for the battery? That means it's 146.5% of the cost of the vehicle, which is just insane. Obviously, they don't want you to buy a new battery. I think what's going on here is... Uh, the packaging required, or the, sorry, the logistics required to get a separate battery over to Australia is probably just too expensive. They'd rather you just buy a new car and then they fix it up or send it back to warranty or whatever. Because, yeah, 85000 is just extraordinary. Insurance companies are not going to like that either. They're going to have to write off the car very quickly. Um, but, yeah, I think that's what's happening. And a lot of the uh, logistics company or some of the logistics companies out there I've read, uh, they attach... A bit of a premium on their delivery costs if they have to carry big, uh, high, huge capacity batteries, uh, just because of the now I don't want to cause any uproar here, but just because of the potential fire hazards uh, that they can bring up. Just like petrol cars, I know if they were carrying you know a big tanker of, of diesel or petrol, that's probably going to have some premium above delivering you know a bunch of firewood, for example. It's just something we're going to have to consider in the future. But I think that's what's going on here, and I think that's why it's $85,000. And then lastly, a 2020 Tesla Model 3 Performance. I rang up uh, Tesla. They were a bit difficult to, to get through to the service department, or the parts department, sorry. Um, but they said that they don't provide prices. Basically, get on the Tesla app, and it will tell you pretty much straight away. So my question to you is, if you have a Tesla Model 3 or know someone who's got one, Please, could you go into the app and just, apparently it's very easy, you just go in and just go through the parts bit and, and just source your battery. 
and it'll tell you right there and then. And then you can please put it in the comments so we can all see. But I did find a report by the NRMA of, uh, they, they were quoting this battery, uh, quoting this owner who had found a, uh, a quote for the battery and they put it on some Facebook forum or Tesla owners uh, group on Facebook. And it was $15,269.11 for the base spec battery, uh, this, this quote was. I'm not sure how accurate that is. I think it was in Australia, but that seems pretty cheap compared with the rest of them that we've seen. I'm not sure if that's based on an exchange program as well, where they take your old battery. But even still, that's, that's pretty good. If that's true, that's, that's very good. That equals to be, uh, sorry, if that's the, I've got the price here of a performance model, which is 95,358 for the 2020 model. That works out to be 16% of that price, which is very good. It's the best here. But again, uh, it's the base spec model. The, that price was from, and it's from someone on Facebook. So I, I can't guarantee that that's what the price is. Please, if you've got a Tesla Model 3 or you know for sure, let us know in the comments. Does that mean that if you're on the used car market looking for an EV, that you should actually go through and see what prices are for the for a used for a new battery? To some degree, yes, um, but I think in the future prices will sort of even up as battery technology becomes more widespread. But tell me what you think in the comments below. Would you buy an electric a used electric vehicle? Uh, do you think that this is not going to be a this is a non-issue? You know, because you just you keep it for seven or five years and the battery will be fine. You replace it. But then again, what does that mean in 10 years time? Does that mean there's gonna be all these used EVs that nobody wants to touch because they don't wanna replace the battery, they just keep buying new ones. Now, a bit like t you know TVs and things these days, we just buy, buy and buy and buy and buy all these new ones, but then what happens to the old ones? Well, a lot of them get recycled, which is fair enough, but at the moment in Australia, we don't really have a massive um, infrastructure for recycling batteries, which we should, especially if this you know EV um, world, you know, grows. It's going to be a big thing. So we're going to have all these used EVs hanging around, potentially, unless the prices do come down. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching.